Thank you for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about your practice. Tell me yeah. about your firm. Uh, yes, I was born in uh, Burkina Faso in West Africa. Uh -huh. uh, but my practice is based in Berlin, from where I work a lot um, in, uh, in Burkina Faso uh -huh. in Africa, but then from now in the world, even in the U.S. Yeah. You recently did the Serpentine Pavilion. Can you tell us about your project? Yeah. So the Serpentine Pavilion for me was a chance to just uh, uh, do um, um, architecture in the heart of London. Uh, but then I had an idea, an idea to just create a gathering space for, uh -huh. the, for the people in London to come together and gather together and even to reflect and to say a rich city like London uh, can give an example by using resources. So this project was meant to enhance human experience towards nature. So in this pavilion, we e even collected rainwater, which is like a, a unexpected, yeah, to give it to the park. Yeah, can you kind of expand on that? I, I would be interested to hear how maybe West African designers are dealing with sustainability issues, yeah, yeah. because that seems to be kind of central in a lot of your work. Yeah, I mean, it's... I don't know if uh, sustainability is just a matter for West, um, to, for people coming from West Africa. Sure. But 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 uh, yeah. But uh, what you pointing out is important. Uh, I think because I started even as a student to do project to create school um, and dealing with scarcity, you know, with uh -huh. uh, with less material and always to be forced to focus on one material to create. Um, it lead so that ecology sustainability saving resources are always embedded in my project. So uh, potentially, the way you do things, if you're not used to abundant uh, you know, places like you will do in the US, suddenly you have another approach to material, but that become your, your culture of making uh, architecture. I really love uh, your design for the National Assembly. I think just the first time I saw the rendering for it, it, it just looked like something kind of different. Yeah. Uh, an approach I hadn't seen, and also in an environment that I yeah. had not seen. Can yeah. you tell me a little bit about yeah. designing that space? Yeah, so the design of the Parliament House came because after the a revolt, which led it, a popular revolt, which led it to burning down the, uh, the Parliament House, right. uh, I was invited to join intellectual artists, thinker, to think about um, a way to create a new Parliament House we, which will be accepted by the people, which will have a lot of uh, elements like education and so, etc., etc., and even a memorial. So, doing so, I was saying, okay, if you create a little box and you put high walls and fences and so to protect again, um, is not the solution. Right. An open and uh, uh, really accessible building should be different. So, why not to create a pyramid? you know, and create a pyramid the way that people can camp all day and just take ownership of the building. You create a big facade by putting up steps so people will gather there. And my naive idea was the next time when there is a revolt, they will care for the building. They will not burn it down because they use it. It's a public space that I wanted to create it, uh, to create. But at the same time, is fundamental to reflect the reality of the country. It's an agricultural country. So I said, use some of the steps like terraces, rice terraces, corn terraces, to grow exemplary food and uh -huh. to show to these people, you know, you could use, th use this to survive. So I just wanted to embed this structure in the reality of the country. That's why it came to that design. Yeah, it looks to me like a collection of almost open spaces. It has, yeah. well, at least from the appearance, like a very yeah. pavilion feel or organization yeah. to yeah. it. Absolutely, absolutely. You're totally right. You have like a, <coughs> a collection of different elements in architecture. Even the, the assembly hall is connected to a garden, so a green garden. Why a garden? So gatherings in Africa happen in, in, in a pastime under a tree, uh -huh. a big tree. A tree is a, can be a classroom, can be a, a hospital where you do a vaccination campaign, can be a meeting to debate. So not the less, you know, they call it l'arbre à palabre. You understand? There is the tree where you meet. So I was thinking 
if you integrated this, which is an element of the culture in a design uh -huh. for the Parliament House, it is evident that you're connecting the design to the reality. Yeah. How does an architect work for uh, the current migration uh, yeah, that's yeah. happening all over the world? Such yeah. big and changing patterns. Oh yes, that is a, the migration issue is a big, big issue. It's a big challenge, but it is the challenge of our time. So, right. you know, uh, in uh, you know, in past time, architect architect has always been um, uh, attempt to just use to use the issue on that time to work on it. Uh -huh. So that's why we are called we architect designer and decision maker. We have to come together and consider seriously this issue. If not, if not, um, we, we 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 will miss uh, to create coherent coherent and peaceful cities. We have to tackle this problem by creating affordable housing, not just from, for those that are arriving, you know, right. but also for people living there with low income. If you do so, you create a most inclusive situation. You don't create the tension. Because right. most of the time, the tension arose because people living already there will say, why are you putting so much effort for those that are just arriving. Right, and, so. and this feeling of like, you're taking something from me. Absolutely, uh -huh. you t that is it. The feeling of you are taking something that I own uh, is the, the way uh, radical just have easier voter, you know? They just collect voter, and that we have to be careful with that. But in the way, I always think that it is clear to notice the U.S. and say the U.S. is like a big example where people have been always migrating and that's mm -hmm. why we have to just say in Europe they have to do more effort and to know about it that we cannot stop migration. It is the, the, the attraction. So your places are so attractive to group of people and they will keep coming. What do you do? S integrate them. Do you think design can be a powerful tool in getting people to accept change? So in order to prevent radicalism, we have to get communities, like low-income communities that you talk about, to yes. accept change somehow because immigration will still happen yes. and yes. in order to have peaceful cities we mm. need tools. Is design one of them? Yes. Um, uh, th this is the key. I mean it's not just the housing but it's also job. Right. But a fact is people arriving in the country we have seen in history that are ready to take even less paid jobs. They are contributing to society. They are contributing to yes. the society. Right. So right. we have to care for both. For the refugees, if they have where to stay, if you allow them to stay, they're very competitive. They will find a way to, to work. Uh -huh. We have to just keep the balance, creating infrastructure for those that live there and fear w these new arrival, arrivals, uh, if you can say, these new group of people coming to their, to their places will take away their jobs, the things that they have, housing, what, et cetera. If you care for that, even creating um, uh, like a, a sort of housing even for students, we create a social peaceful place. Uh -huh. we, we will take away the subject to the radicals because at the end, new migration is, is, is beneficial to cities. Think about jobs, think about how they came right. to help build countries. Right. Mm. Yeah. So architecture can be, in this case, architecture can play roles, but architects need powerful decision maker that just say, go ahead.